All right, I'm gonna to talk today about the foundational technique behind the method. The thing that I actually started doing right around, I, I guess probably February to March of last year, I started focusing on standstills. And it's funny that everybody kind of knows this inherently, that standstills are how you learn to throw correctly. <clears throat> when most people learn to start playing, first thing they do in my experience is they go out with their buddies and their buddies hand them whatever disc they happen to have in their bag that's maybe a spare. Maybe they are kind enough to give you a mid-range or maybe even a putter if they know what they're doing. But a lot of people get handed like a fairway driver or a driver as their first throw. And the first time anybody throws a driver or a fairway driver, it doesn't matter how familiar you are with an ultimate disc, you're throwing the thing straight into the air and it's making a big parabola to the left or the right, depending on your arm, your hand domination. Either way, it's really, really hard to learn to throw in the sport. We all know this. It's like the most enigmatic, cryptic problem, the thing that obsessed me for 20 years. So how do you learn the mechanics from the beginning? Well, you need to simplify the mechanics and you need to focus intrinsically on biomechanical efficiency, which is something we talk about at length with the videos for the method. The entire overarching theme of the method project is cultivate efficiency with your motion. It isn't about being necessarily super fast or smooth or anything. When people are talking about things like smooth is far, what they mean is that low effort done with biomechanical efficiency produces force in the right direction. But how to feel that? How complicated? How difficult? The whole method series addresses this fundamental question. How do you feel leverage? the consequence of biomechanical efficiency in the human body. I say it in the videos and I'll say it right now. The human body is an unbelievable construction of efficiency and economy. And one of the things that's super amazing about the human body, and I believe it's unique among all the primate species, only Homo sapiens has a three-part lever for an arm. Look at the arm of like another great ape, like an orangutan or a gorilla, they have a short, stubby lower arm and a big ass beefy forearm and huge hands. They're very like, all the weight is out here, which means their arms are not good for slinging objects. Human arms are the other way around. We're built from heavy to lighter to lightest. In a progression, that is a three part biomechanical lever that you can take advantage of using biomechanical leverage. I'll explain real fast, quick physics lesson, because I got to include one. <clears throat> The way it works is really simple. Your shoulder is big and meaty and connected to your body. Below it is your bicep and your tricep, the biggest massive muscle in the human body unless you're some weird freakish pop I got because of the size of the humerus. And these two muscles have a lot of mass. A lot of mass means a lot of atoms. We're made out of gazillions of atoms, an uncountable number. The amount of atoms in your forearm is less than the number of atoms in your upper arm. And the amount of atoms in your hand is a lot less. So what happens when you start to generate energy with the disc here is that this starts to speed up. This gains mass. The whole mechanism gains mass. But as the energy begins to unload, once the arm starts to swing open, we get an energy transference down the lever. You get all the atoms, every single one in your shoulder and humerus, excited and energetic as a consequence of kinetic motion in this case, linear motion. And as the arm unfolds, the energy flows down into the form, but the form is lighter. At the joint, it becomes lighter, which means all that energy has to get into these molecules, or well, molecules and atoms. And because there are fewer molecules here than here, these guys move a little faster, and, and, and actually quite a bit faster. So this moves slow, this moves faster, as all that energy goes into the forearm. And then finally, at the end of the arm, you have the wrist, the third lever, and the hand, which as I said in the other video, should be gently cradling the disc, like an egg, rather than gripping it tightly in a rictus, because then this whole mechanism can't unload with smoothness and rubber bandedness and so on. Anyway, it flows down the hand, or flows down the arm into the hand. Now the hand is by far the lightest thing even with this little tiny object attached to it. And so all the energy captured in the forearm pours down in, uh, into the hand and into the disc. 
you get this pooling of energy and all the energy has been flowing up through your body because of the kinetic chain the whole time, coming up mainly actually from the huge piston of the right leg, which I will be exhibiting in the next video, which is gonna talk about specifically standstill form. But since I'm doing a physics lesson, I'll try to keep it fairly short. When you're throwing properly, you are harnessing a gigantic piston of energy coming out of the ground. As your foot comes down on the ground, boom, depending on how heavy you are, that's a strong impact. It creates a shock wave coming up. You then add to that shock wave by standing up on your right leg aggressively. You take one step, turn, stand up into the leg. That increases the energy of the shock wave. And that energy has to go somewhere. Your hips turn here and lock out, keeping basically your body oriented perpendicular to your throw line. That energy travels up, the hips can't go any farther. It has to go somewhere, it goes up into your core, and you feel the energy flowing up through your body when you do this correctly and sequentially up into your throwing arm. Wow, it starts to get heavy and energetic. As your arm opens up, it transfers the energy into your forearm, getting heavier. Now it's in your hand in the disc, which as I said in the other video, turns into like a giant meaty sledgehammer, which is how my form feels when I throw now. Using this sequencing, bam. Whew, uh, anyway, I think that's enough physics for a moment, but that's how the principle of biomechanical leverage works. We use it in all sorts of things in the world. And of course, it was a necessary component of how human beings designed siege machines hundreds and hundreds of years ago. In fact, my good friend Owen has a channel called Trebuchet Disc Golf. Why does he call it that? It's because the trebuchet used exactly the same principle to generate energy in its huge throwing arm. And out at the end of its tiny little throwing arm, a little pouch, is a projectile that is being hurled by a counterweight that weighs literally tons that's dropping. And all that energy travels up through a lever into the throwing arm and the thing comes out like a missile, even though it's like 800 AD or something. They had missiles back then. So um, I'm gonna demonstrate a series of shots coming up here that demonstrate the principle of how biomechanical leverage in the sequence can be harnessed, how you can harness and tap into this incredibly energetic mechanism to produce energy that's directed where the disc is trying to go. You can link your brain to it. It's not even really particularly hard to do. And the results are astonishing. Stay tuned for that.